What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some Neighbors from Hell, Nightmare Neighbors, whatever you want to call it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> and if you are new here and love a Reddit story, consider hitting that subscribe button, maybe that notification bell too, and let's jump straight in to today's stories. Much love, guys. Now, our first story is coming from Blossom Cup 69 titled, My neighbor is telling everyone I'm lying about my pregnancy. Long story short, my neighbor, we were calling Greg, was into me. We made small talk once in an elevator, and a week later when he saw me walk outside, he chased me down the street and asked where I was going. When I told him to get coffee, he asked if he could come. I'm in a relationship and was 15 weeks pregnant at the time, but not showing at all. I told him I was meeting a friend at coffee so he would leave me alone. He then asked our doorman for my phone number, claiming I told him they could give it to him. I wish my door people would have asked me first, but they gave it him. Ever since, he has been non-stop texting me, asking me to do stuff. Finally today, I replied and told him I'm moving into a house in October with my long-term partner, that I'm pregnant, and while I think he's a nice person, I'm not interested in spending time together. He replied and said, lol, you don't have to make things up just to not hang out. I didn't even want to have sex with you. I replied and said, not making anything up, but okay. Take care and best of luck to you. Now I've had multiple people in my building tell me that Greg is running around telling everyone I'm lying about being pregnant and being in a relationship because I don't want to date him. I'm shocked that a 35 year old man is acting this way. The good news is my other neighbors know he's full of shit, but it's gonna be so uncomfortable now if I run into him in person. I feel like I'm in high school. And a lot of people in the comments on this one just saying, go to your building management to try and get this resolved that the staff there shouldn't be giving out your number just willy nilly. But as always, when we cover nightmare neighbors, it always takes me to ask Reddit where people ask, who is the worst neighbor you've ever had and what did they do to become so? And this comment from your fave Nate who says, I live in a row house in a bad part of my city. Not the best accommodations, I know, but you take what you can get. I've had a lot of shit neighbors over the years, and the house next to mine has been raided three times by the police. Twice for drug dealers, once for a guy that came here from New York State, I'm in PA, who was wanted for murder. Not the nicest neighborhood, so, so obviously bad neighbors are going to come around. But one family takes the cake. As you may have guessed, my neighbors change every few months, usually due to eviction. So a couple of years ago, in moves a middle-aged woman with her teenage son and daughter who was something like six years old. New neighbors, no big deal. I didn't go to greet them or anything. That stuff is pretty atypical here. It's kind of live and let live place. On the first night, I noticed there would be problems. The music was blasting from the kids' room. He was right next to me, against the same wall until 11 p.m. This actually isn't bad in my neighborhood, but what was bad was what made it stop. He only turned it off once his mum started yelling at him to do so, and then she kept yelling. She was screaming her head off at him for every insignificant little detail about his room that he moved into today until three in the fucking morning. I just went downstairs to sleep on the couch instead of bothering to try and sleep with that noise going. Fast forward a couple of days and I'm answering the door on a Saturday morning, only to see that it's in fact the lady from next door. I was polite and courteous, as was she, and she had said she just wanted to get to know her new neighbors. We spoke for maybe five minutes before I got to the catch. She wanted to borrow $6,000. <laughs> that was the cost for her husband's bail and it would mean a lot to her if, as her neighbor, I would loan her 6000 I was apologetic as I could manage and turned her down. She flipped her shit. This bitch started off screaming and ranting about how what a horrible person I was and how unchristian I was. Not a Christian, and she hated me. No biggie, closed the door, went inside, turned on some music and made a sandwich. A couple hours later, I'm gonna head downtown to meet up with some friends. I walk downstairs to my door, which has glass panes, and see she is still fucking standing there. She waited for me to come back for two hours. The second she sees me, she is back to yelling. So I took the back door out of the house and took the long way to the bus stop. Coming home, I've almost forgotten about the bitch. I got a ride home from a friend and a few of us are going to chill at my house for the rest of the night. It's been about seven hours, now 11 p.m. When we drive up, I literally just stop mid-conversation to say, no fucking way. 
My friends were obviously confused until I explained that the bitch was still fucking standing there. At this point, I realized that ignoring her was not working, so I apologized to my friends ahead of time. Then we went up to the door to confront her. Don't remember much of what she yelled about, except that she was so offended that I would sneak by her like that. Like I was supposed to give a shit. Anyway, we essentially collectively shouted her down and told her to fuck herself with a blowtorch until she left. As we're staying up late, shooting the shit, laughing at my crazy neighbor and drinking, we hear her ranting at her son again all night. Come 5am, the cops are knocking on my door and asking if I saw the son, who apparently stole his mother's car and drove off. Can't say I approve of the method, but I definitely approve of the objective. He came back a couple of days later. As far as I'm aware, no charges were pressed. So for the next five months, this bitch was a constant migraine in my life. She would actually go outside with one of those little kitty snow shovels, shovel up any dog shit from around the block and deposit it on my front door. I caught her doing this multiple times. I would just shovel it into the bed of a tree sitting out front. That's good for it, right? I'm not a gardener. Until one day a friend of mine came over and was asking what the shit was about. So then he threw it through an open window on the third floor. Good fucking day. Another fun event consisted of her dumping paint cans on the sidewalk in front of my house. I actually liked that one. When I left in the morning, it was like walking on a fucking rainbow. My personal favorite though was when they were putting in an air conditioner. Her son was attempting to put it in the third floor window and doing a poor job of it. Looked like he had never done it before. So, being that I had no beef with the kid, I yelled out some advice as I was walking towards the bus stop that day. Then I hear from inside, who said that? And she comes storming up to the window, looks out, sees me, and then proceeds to pry her son away from the window. She shoves the air conditioner into his arms and pushed the fucking storm window out of its frame and out at me. She missed, but the attempt was not forgotten. She left that month due to eviction. Best news I've ever had in my life. Tim O'Brien 93 says, My next door neighbor growing up had a death in the family. Day of the funeral, neighbor comes to the door and asks if my dad can borrow a tie. My father complies and gives him a nice black silk tie, suitably appropriate for the occasion. We show up to the funeral and see the neighbor strangely not wearing the tie he borrowed. Look at the casket and my dad's tie is being worn by the corpse. Not wanting to be rude, nothing is said and, as a result, the tie was buried with a corpse, never to be seen again. (laughs) And there isn't exactly much you can do in that situation, is there? You can't go, well, that's my tie, I just want that back a second. (laughs) It's just not going to happen, is it? As Badooki Beefoven says, I live next to these two absolutely crazy people. The first weird thing, the dude shows up at my house at 9pm, asking for bus fare. The bus runs nowhere near our neighborhood. Next, I found the woman he lived with nearly beat down another neighbor's door at 2 a.m., asking to use the phone to call 911 because her son was having an asthma attack. She dialed a full 10-digit number, so my same neighbor asked whom she was calling. She explained that her uncle was a doctor, but when he didn't answer, she just said thank you and started to leave. My same neighbor asked about getting medical help for her son, and the crazy neighbor said he'd be fine. She then sat outside on her porch for hours according to my sane neighbor. The next day, a man called from the number she had dialed, asking who called. My neighbor explained the situation and the man verbatim said, Oh, I had a relationship with that woman. She is crazy. And the icing on the cake, they ran an extension cord to another neighbor's crawlspace outlet and were stealing electricity from him. Just batty freaking people. A deleted user says, so I used to live on the campus of this big private school because my parents were teachers there. And we lived in this big apartment complex that also housed student dorms. We had two other teacher families as neighbors. Gonna change their names for this. So one was the Smith, a nice elderly couple. The husband was the Dean and used to work as the sheriff of a police in town until he got seriously injured and had to retire. I have the feeling he was seriously depressed. He was a quiet, solitary man with a serious smoking problem he could never overcome. Then there were the Jackoffs, a couple of drama teachers new to the school and their two sons, both of whom were probably around eight years old at the most. Mrs. Smith was fond of gardening. The Smiths had an apartment on the ground floor, so they were allowed to garden the areas around their doors and windows. Beautiful flower arrangements and stuff, lots of bird feeders. Then one day, one of the two young Jackoffs, who usually played in the area around the gardens, decided to rip up all the flowers and knock down the bird feeders. The Smiths were upset, but Mr. and Mrs. Jackoff refused to apologize and found it was not necessary for the kids too either, so things got tense fast. Mr. Smith was fond of wildlife, hence all the bird feeders in the garden. 
The apartment was also situated on a hill overlooking a pond that attracted tons of ducks, geese, and herons. One day, he comes home with a cage full of ducks that were originally going to be slaughtered, but he rescued. This was back when I was nine or 10, so I don't remember all the details as to how he found them slash got them. They couldn't fly and he let them loose to live on the pond. All was good. Then one day, the Jackoffs complained to Top Brass that the ducks were too loud. This pissed me off because they always blasted a radio out the window while the kids were playing and ripping up the gardens and were a danger to the kids. It also helped them that they were longtime friends with the headmaster even before they started teaching there. So Mr. Smith was forced to return the ducks to where he got them. Most likely they were killed. So yeah, the Jackoffs were horrible people. Everyone hated them, but nobody could do much because of their friends in high places. Parents were already upset with the people in charge, so we moved soon after. And this next one's from Blood Art. My neighbor threatened to kill me, then actually tried. This will be a long post. I lived in a rural-ish area, on the lower level of a home that had been split into three apartments, one upper, two lower units. The unit above me was rented by a 50-ish male, family friend of our landlord, and had been there for 10 plus years. When I met him, this neighbor seemed nice enough, if a bit odd. He bragged about how intelligent he was and how the world would someday recognize his mathematic brilliance. Should have known, never trust math braggarts. <laughs> Since I went to the school part-time and worked two jobs, I didn't see much of my neighbors. On the rare occasion that I had, the time to relax at home, I would watch a movie and enjoy the chance to decompress. During one of these wondrous movie nights, I decided to watch an old comedy. Everything was great until about 10 minutes in and I heard laughter coming from the wall behind my couch. Turns out the old stairwell that connected the upper and lower units was not properly sealed off, as I had been told. In fact, the only thing separating the two units was a flimsy bifold door and a latch hook on the creepy neighbor's side, of course. My couch was against the wall of the stairwell. My neighbor had been sitting on the stairs listening to me and the movie, <laughs> what the hell? Thoroughly creeped out, I confronted him about it. He admitted that he enjoyed listening to me on a daily basis. He especially liked the weekly phone calls I made to my grandma and told me which of my friends were allowed to continue visiting. He also highly disapproved of my frequent male visitors and felt it necessary to tell me only whores have male friends. Apparently babysitting my young cousins makes me a whore. Who knew? Being a single female, this whole ordeal made me incredibly uncomfortable. So I contacted the landlord. I tried being calm and reasonable, explaining that in our contract it states all the access points, doors, stairwells, etc. have been sealed up according to county code to prevent access from one unit to another. I called him out, basically in the nicest and legally well-armed way I possibly could. I relayed the recent conversation with creepy upstairs neighbor and how the whole situation made me feel unsafe and I would be withholding rent until the door situation was taken care of. My landlord's solution? He put soundproofing foam behind the door and told the neighbor to return the spare key to my apartment. Yeah, apparently, creepy upstairs neighbor had a master key to the two lower units, both occupied by young, single women, just in case. This charming detail was nowhere in the rental agreement. I promptly changed my locks, which pissed off upstairs neighbor to no end, so he started retaliating. He called the sheriff's department on a daily basis. According to this neighbor, I was running a brothel. If only I had the time. Hoarding animals, running a drug cartel, running a dodgy business, which I can't say for obvious reasons. That was a fun visit from CPS. Torturing small animals, demolishing the house, all oh, the list goes on. Being a broke ass student with no family in the state and friends that were equally broke slash in shitty living situations, my only option was to deal with the craziness, carry pepper spray and hope that I could find a less shitty room to rent in the meantime. I logged every incident, took photos, carried a tape recorder anytime I went outside and even borrowed a camcorder to catch this guy on tape if he came in my house. Anytime something happened, I made sure to tell my landlord in email so I had a written record. Of course, the landlord just turned around and told creepy neighbor I was complaining about him again, which just made things worse. I finally got this guy on tape coming into my apartment through the sealed stairwell door while I wasn't home. I had enough evidence to get a restraining order. Creepy neighbor's response to being served ambushed me when I came home late at night and tell me that I was going to fucking die. And nobody would notice and nobody would find my body. It was going to happen in a horrific way and he would dance over my corpse. Got that gem on tape too. Creepy neighbor was arrested, then released the next day because he was mentally unstable. 
Can someone please tell me how releasing a mentally unstable man who threatened to kill someone is a good idea? When he was released, I was at home packing up my apartment. Good friends found me a place to crash for a while and were helping me to get the fuck out. One of the friends started to smell something like burning rubber, but we couldn't find the source. Then someone noticed the black smoke coming from under the shared laundry room door, which was inexplicably locked from the creepy neighbor's side. Then smoke started coming through the stairwell door. We hauled ass outside, called the fire department and waited. Creepy neighbor started throwing glass bottles and oil-soaked rags separately down at us. We called the sheriff's department and, and backed a safe distance away. One friend popped down the road to see if the retired Marine was at home and was willing to lend a hand. Thankfully, he was. Creepy neighbor, pissed that I was not currently on fire, decided to come outside and finish the job. He brought a rather large kitchen knife with him. The friendly neighborhood Marine easily disarmed and pinned Creepy Neighbor until the police arrived. Last I heard, Creepy Neighbor was seeking professional help and the landlord remodeled slash sold the house. Isn't renting fun? Damn, and I can't imagine living in that kind of situation. And just thinking about that there might be a guy sat on the stairwell behind you listening to your every day to day life and bringing it up in conversation. Yeah, that is creepy as hell and would freak me out. I don't think I'd be able to stay there very long. And I know OP was probably in a difficult situation and couldn't get out of there, but I'd literally stay anywhere, <laughs> anywhere apart from there. And the next one's from Godolin who says, oh man, it's my time to shine. About three years after we moved into our current townhouse, a family moved into our building. For some background info, our townhome building is six units in a row. This new family has an itty bitty yappy dog. Now my family does our best to love all animals, but this dog coupled with the owners brought out our hate. Instead of doing something rational, they bought five 10 foot leashes and chained them together. From one of the two middle units, the little bastard had access to three different yards. Not only that, but the family had a tendency to leave for hours at a time with the dog outside. One day, my dad had had enough. He decided to call the police and report them for neglect. Unfortunately, the owners arrived home before the police arrived. The officers finally showed and they had a quick talk with them before leaving. For the next few days, the neighbors gave my dad the stink eye whenever they saw him. Several days later, my dad is sitting out on our deck smoking a cigar. To his surprise, the local law enforcement officers roll into the parking lot. A friendly looking officer steps out the cruiser and greets him. Apparently, we'd been reported for animal abuse. My dad chuckles as he looks down at our dog. On our patio was our dog, Harley. Rest in peace. He was a comfortably pudgy miniature Doberman Pinscher. He lay in a shallow kiddie pool filled with water. Next to the pool, two bowls filled with food and water. The officer takes one good look at him, looks at back at my dad, once more at the dog and says, well, I think we're done here. Sorry for the trouble, sir. The neighbors moved out a month later. <laughs> Gorilla1969 says a former neighbor used to lift a little terrier dog over the fence so it could shit in my yard. One time, I let my own dogs out late at night without glancing outside first, and a stupid terrier went ape shit and attacked them. I had to pick it up by the scruff and hold it in the air while it continued to do its best chainsaw impression and neighbor lady screeched that I was trying to murder her dog. I realized pretty quickly that this was not a person that would respond to reason, and finally had to start calling the cops when she wouldn't stop. In retaliation, she started throwing her dog turds at my window, smearing them on my cars and leaving them in my mailbox. Spoke to the police again. One of them lives on my street and knew her well. And they basically told her if they ever received another complaint about this ever, they were going to arrest her and do everything in their power to make her life a living hell. I got a few cheap security cameras and made sure she knew about them. All silence and death stares after that until she moved. I don't know what it is about nightmare neighbors. There's a thing about dog turds and, and spreading them and throwing them at people, isn't there? I just don't know what it is. And this one's from Tisa Spiced who says, ooh, I had the most psycho neighbor ever. I moved into a cheap flat which shared a porch with a place next door. When I viewed the place, the porch was a little untidy, but I was assured it'd be sorted out. When I moved in, there were bags of dog shit on top, dog shit again at the top of the outdoor stairs. The porch was filled with rubbish, some of it blocking my flat entrance. And there was an unholy stench about the place to the point where I smelled of dog shit just from being next door. I knocked on the neighbor's door a few times, but all that ever happened was a dog barked at me. It was obvious the animal was shitting in the flat and it wasn't getting cleaned up. I ended up leaving a surprisingly polite note, which was answered with an angry one telling me to take any problems up with her boyfriend downstairs. 
I knocked on the door downstairs and it was answered by a thug with a skinhead, combat trousers and a t-shirt with a gun on it. He wasn't very helpful but I learned that his girlfriend had the place upstairs paid for by housing benefits but she lived downstairs with him and just kept the dog in there. I could tell I wasn't going to get anywhere. So I talked to the landlord and suggested they do an inspection as they'd be horrified as what she's done with the place. I also asked them to not let on that I complained to them because I didn't want friction. Of course, they had to mention that a complaint had been made so the guy started threatening me. I recorded him saying he'd break into my flat in the middle of the night and attack me. I pointed out that I was disabled. He wouldn't have to try very hard in the hope of shaming him, but he just got worse and worse. The police charged him, but he kept on at it. Eventually, he figured out another tactic. I had some stuff in the shared shed. He trashed it all, then turned off my water mains. They turned off my electricity and smashed my fuse box so I couldn't turn it back on. I just carried on cheerfully, all the while bothering the landlord to let me out of my six-month tenancy. To their shame, they didn't for months, but my cheerfulness really fucked with his head. He got crazier and crazier. Eventually, I was woken up at 3 a.m. by him screwing my door closed with an electric drill. At that point, I was quite scared, to be honest. I half expected him to torch the place. Eventually, I got out of the tenancy and left. When I went back to check over the place, he burst out of his flat and told me I was brave showing my face around there again. I turned to him and said, Look, mate, the thing is, now all you are is a funny story to tell people about the lunatic that lived next door to, and walked off. It felt so fucking good. Oh, and he and his girlfriend did eventually get kicked out too. Unfortunately, they still have the poor dog. They live next to some friends now, and I'm so fucking tempted to give them a piss frisbee or something, but I won't because I'm not a twat. And someone did ask, they said, what's a piss frisbee? Which I was, I was thinking it as well. And apparently you, you pee into a frisbee or a plate, freeze it, remove it from the plate, then slide the now frozen puck of urine under their door while they sleep and it soaks and melts into the carpet. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Evil genius, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Burrito Mansa says, we fell out with our neighbors directly across the street because the mum was always causing hassle and pitting other neighbors against one another with false gossip. Fast forward to Christmas Eve 2014 and the police suddenly turn up to arrest her. According to the neighbors directly beside them who heard the shouting through the walls, she had attacked the husband and when he called the police, she started attacking herself in order to play the victim card. Come New Year's Day and out of the blue, the husband and his father knocks on our door to clear the air and basically apologize for all the years that she had stirred the shit. He looked pretty awful, like he hadn't slept in weeks as well as scratch marks. My heart went out to him. His dad was verging on tears when his son when describing what he had gone through. It looks like he moved in with his new girlfriend and he's looking a lot better. We always make sure to see how he's doing and it looks like he's back to his old self again. And let's have one more from a wanderlust stricken who says, the house next door to mine must have a curse that attracts horrible tenants. First, a large family with five kids lived there. The kids thought it was fun to do things like throw rocks and diapers against the side of my house or shoot arrows in my yard. At one point, their pregnant pet mouse escaped and we had a mouse problem for the next few years. They finally moved and the owner's daughter moved in with her boyfriend. They were young and threw lots of parties, not too big of a deal, just a little loud, until one night I hear something outside. Completely naked man standing on the hood of my car. After them, a slightly older couple moved in. Shortly after, they moved friends in. Constantly had people stopping by. A car would show up, pull into the garage, shut the door and leave five minutes later. I immediately knew they were dealing drugs. An officer came by my house one day and told me that the woman living there had run off and asked that I call him immediately if I saw her at the house. She showed up a week or two later. I called him and she was arrested for counterfeit. Turns out she'd been printing money in her garage. <laughs> Fuck. After, one, after one moved, I would always say it couldn't get any worse and it always did going from brats to drunkards to criminals. I have way more stories about the druggie, but my comment is getting long. <laughs> now, what do you guys make of these Nightmare Neighbor stories? Do you have one of your own? If you do, I would love to hear it on our own subreddit, r slash Mark Narration. Share it there, and it may possibly be read out on the channel. And if you have a moment of your time, consider hitting that like button as well. Maybe to the subscribe button if you do enjoy a Reddit story. Thank you so much for your time out of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.